Hello class. In this video, we're going to I'm going to go over some a uh, rule to help us in our efforts to identify the structure of a molecule. And then I will talk about some other fragmentation patterns that can help us uh, analyze a mass spectrum. So the first rule that I want to go over with you is the rule is called the nitrogen rule. And it is a very, very simple rule. It simply states that if you locate your molecular ion peak, and if it is odd, then there is a good chance that you have a nitrogen atom in your mass spec. If your uh, molecular ion peak is even, like in this example, then you probably have no nitrogens or you have an even amount of nitrogens. Okay. So expanding that, what I just said, if you have an odd number of nitrogens, then your M over Z or your molecular ion peak will be odd. But if you have an even molecular ion peak, it could mean that you have no nitrogens or an even amount of nitrogens. Really straightforward example or rule. All right. Now we're going to look at fragmentation patterns. <clears throat> and before we delve into the fragmentation patterns of alcohols, I want to take a look at another example of a alkane. So let's say we have a compound that looks like this. Okay. So we have a compound that looks like that, and we take our molecule, stick it into the mass spec. It's going to rip off an electron, but where's the most probable spot for it to remove an electron? That's the question that I'm proposing to you guys. Well, I'm going to copy and paste this. It's uh, just another, a few of them ready. Okay. We could have an option of taking the electron from right here. And then that would give us our positive charge piece. Or we could choose it right here. Right. So there's many, many options. And then what about right here? Many options here. Well, which one is the most likely and more probable? Well, the, let's take a look at how it fragments and what happens. Okay? So if this fragments and this goes this way, what piece do we have left? Well, that's going to give us this fragment right here. So that is going to be our fragment. And that's going to be positively charged because that carbon right there only has three bonds. And then we would get our methyl radical that does not get detected on the mass spec. Now I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and take a look at this one. What if this fragmented this way? What do we get? We would get something that looks like this. That would give us a carbocation on that carbon. And then we would have CH3. 
a radical right there. Okay. So that's what our species would look like. Now let's take and compare this one with the very top one. I'll put it right here. So what we want to do is compare this cation to that cation. Well, let's take a look at it without looking at the brackets and get rid of that. Where is the cation actually going to be? It's going to be on that carbon and on that carbon. What do we notice? Do you notice something about the stabilities? That's a primary cation. And this one is a, a tertiary cation. And we've learned in previous, in Orgo 1, about carbocation stability. So we know that carbocation is the most stable. And if it's the most stable, it's the most prominent one that will be formed. So we would expect that when we go to the mass spectrum, we would have a higher relative abundance of that cation compared to that one due to their stability. So in summary, with respect to this example right here, typically more stable the cation, more abundant fragments you will see in the mass spec. Okay, now let's take a look at how alcohols fragment. Now this is important because most alcohols, when you inject an alcohol into the mass spectrum, you rarely see a molecular ion peak with uh, alcohols. And that is because the alcohol is, it fragments very, very easily. So you're not going to have any of the molecular ion. So that's a really key feature to remember and not get freaked out if you can't find the molecular ion peak if you're dealing with alcohols. Okay. Now, there's two types of fragmentation that we want to talk about. The first one is called alpha cleavage, and then the other one is called dehydration. So let's focus our attention on alpha cleavage first. Now, the alpha carbon, that's what the alpha is referring to here. The alpha carbon is the carbon that is directly attached to the oxygen atom. That is alpha. We call it alpha cleavage okay, because we are going to be breaking this bond right there. Okay. Now, when you take a look at this alcohol right here, have you noticed that it is a radical? See how there's only there's two electrons there and only one right there? That's because what has happened is the original alcohol molecule looks like this. Or we can put the lone pairs right there. It doesn't really matter where the lone pairs are drawn. I'm going to draw them right here. So what has happened is we've stuck our alcohol into the mass spec where it has encountered the electron beam and when it's then it knocked off one of these electrons right there. Okay. So right there, that cation there or that molecular ion has already been exposed to the high energy electron beam. Now what happens now, we lose that electron off the oxygen, we're going to have a alpha cleavage in which the one electron or the radical is going to come down and then this alpha carbon bond right here is going to break homolytically so one electron goes here one goes there so that bond right there is now severed right there just completely severed so we're going to have a fragment so this little carbon and an r group is right there 
And then this side right here is going to be right there. And that's our oxonium ion. And that oxonium ion is stable because it has resonance shown right there. Another way alcohols um, fragment is dehydration. So what we're doing is we're losing water at the end of the fragmentation. So what's happening here, I want to draw the mechanism of how this is occurring. Okay, And I'm going to come to the whiteboard. Let's draw ourselves our, not with yellow. Let's, okay. Right. So that is going to, let's see here. So there's our molecule. We stick it in the mass spec. So the high energy electron beams are going to rip off of it. Right, rip off an electron. So let's rip off one in there. Okay. Now we have our cation. Now this is going to fragment to give off water. Look at this. So this electron right here is going to come there. And we have lone pairs right here as well. This oxygen carbon bond is going to put one electron up there to form a bond with the hydrogen atom and then the other one is going to go there just like that. So what does that look like at the end of that? Well we can see that the two electrons in this bond right there are now that They've been used, so they've been broken off. So what we get now is this. And we have one electron right there. And because we, one less electron, that's going to be positively charged. And then what else do we have? We have that piece right there. Okay. I'm going to draw it like that. It has the two lone pairs. They didn't get moved at all because there's no arrow showing that they've moved. But what has happened? We have used this electron and one of the electrons in this bond to form this bond right there. And so that is water which in the, the slide right here is right there. And then you can see that this right there looks a little bit different on how I drew it. I have shown right here. But what I'm drawing here is the exact same thing right there. And what's really, really, um, what's the word, telling about this type of fragment is you can see from going from the alcohol to this alkene radical, what is it? It's 18 atomic mass units smaller. So if you ever see a fragment in your mass spec that's 18 mass units smaller, then your molecular ion peak, that might have been an alcohol. And then you know you have at least one oxygen in your molecule. Pretty, pretty telling. Okay. So just look through my notes real quick to make sure I'm not missing anything. Now let's take a look at amines. So let's just focus our attention on this top half here of the slide. So much like 
alcohols, amines can also undergo alpha cleavage. But the difference between an amine and an alcohol is that you can have a molecular ion peak when you have amines. All right, those can still occur. So we can see mechanistically what's going on here is that this molecular ion came, it has been exposed to the high electron energy beam. So you can see that it's missing one electron right here. So when it loses that electron off of the nitrogen atom, it's going to break down as shown here with these fish hook arrows. And was that going to generate a radical, an, an uncharged radical? So that piece right there, this piece right here came from this piece. Because look at the fish hook arrows. That this is telling us this bond right there is broken. So this piece on the right, or the radical, is that piece. And then that piece is that. And so we have a very stable, or can I say relatively stable, species right there. Okay. And another very common fragmentation pattern is when you have a some kind of carbonyl. So, it, well, to be more specific, when you have an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay. So if you have an aldehyde or a ketone, this can happen. So what we have here is a ketone, and we're using the Greek alphabet to uh, label carbons. So the carbon right here that is directly attached to the carbonyl carbon is called alpha. So this carbon right here is also alpha because it's directly attached to the carbonyl. But we're not really interested in looking at that alpha carbon in this example. So we have alpha and then beta and gamma. And if we, we could keep going, we could say then this one would be delta. Right there, there's our delta carbon if we keep on counting. Okay. But on the gamma carbon, if there's a hydrogen right here, do you see how we can use these five fish hook arrows to generate a alkene okay now that alkene is uh, neutral so that's not going to be found on our uh, mass spec but then we do have generate this stabilized uh, carbocation radical species okay now, unlike alcohols, if you do a dehydration, you know it's going to be minus 18. Now, with the McLafferty rearrangement, the size of that fragment is going to depend on what's attached at the alpha. Okay. And no, 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 wait, I take that back. The size of this fragment right here is going to be dependent upon what is directly attached to the gamma and the beta carbons. All right. So we could call that, that one's beta, that one's gamma, and there's our alpha. Those where the fragments are coming from. So this piece right here is that piece right there. And then all of that comes from that piece. Okay, so those are some very common fragmentation patterns that you need to be aware of.